Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to the correct views. Sam I B. Deganji once again reporting for the media speaks. Yes, I have been gone. I've been gone almost a week. If you're new to the show and you want to hear about the Ferguson rioting thing, do me a favor and skip ahead five minutes. Would you do that for me? Because I'm going to talk to my subscribers for a minute. I've got over 300 of you now. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, many of you found me because of the Fukushima, which I'll be doing next month. Somebody roped me into not doing one this month, and it was a disaster. Um... I do want to say this. This is where I've been. Again, if you want to hear the news, you've got all kinds of news coming. Go ahead like five minutes, okay? I'll even wave into the camera. So when you see me wave, that's when the news starts that you want. All right, friends, here's what happened. Uh, regular listeners, welcome aboard. I was, uh, I was just on the road away from all things computer for a while. Um, it's called a vacation, and I needed one. Um, I DJ, I run this show, I'm in a band, I write stuff, I'm trying to start various businesses of which I'm not sure which I'm going to go into yet. I needed a way from all of it, and it was great. But I do have an interesting story about the TSA. Um, first of all, it had been reported that there were no more radiation machines in airports. That my friends, was a TSA lie. Uh, they were in Atlanta, and, uh, of course, uh, Christelle and I opted out. Uh, and they do. They holler over. Uh, they didn't really grab uh, Mr. Happy or his friends. Uh, he did run his hand up the crux of my leg. You know what? I'll take the groping before the radiation. You guys know. You're my regular listeners. You guys know. I've been juiced with my teeth. I talked about it. Um, I've been juiced when I, heavily juiced when I had vertigo about a year ago. I'm going to get mildly radiated just by flying. It's a different kind of radiation though, so don't let them tell you that. That's my Fukushima listeners know. And um, they don't even calibrate it right. So you can grab the cojones before I go ahead and let you juice me again. But this is what's standing out. I put my computer through their little x-ray machine and if you look the computer that I'm now on is gray you regular listeners know that my cam my computer is black well my computer is juiced I don't know why I put it through the machine and it's gone that affects you regular listeners because I've now lost all the bookmarks for the dunce cap of the month and it did put me back a little bit for the Fukushima that I'm planning, but don't worry, I've got it. I, I have some idea what the uh, I have some idea where I was already going with the Fukushima. It is going to greatly affect the dunce cap of the month. And the last thing, for those of you following the Google Hangout saga, uh, D Lake for Prez. I am currently trying to do a live hangout, and Google is still barring me from doing it. And I cannot do a live hangout. The correct views cannot do a live hangout. Do I think I'm being targeted? Yes, that's exactly what I think is happening. I think I'm being targeted. So, Sam, you think you're so big and so powerful with your 300 subscribers that Google's going to target specifically you? No, I think it's targeting all of us. And I think it's set up to some kind of an algorithm or some way to do it where it's not noticed easily. I can't go live on Google Hangout, and it's another computer here. So uh, those of you following the joke at themediaspeaks.com, I still can't go live. Um, all right, guys, I'm waving into the camera. That's the update. That's where I've been, and I'm back and happy to be back. Thank you for watching. Guys, I waved into the camera. That means uh, it's time for the not-so-happy news. I haven't covered the Ferguson riots, not just because I was gone. They started before I left. Because of Vladimir Putin. What? Follow me on this. I thought that old Vlad acted very, very, very guilty. You can always tell when someone's lying. Um... For one thing, they tend to hide facts. And if you put facts in front of them, they talk about something else. Like you'll say that, uh, let's say you said Hitler was a terrible person because he killed his own people. 
and slaughtered people. Somebody will say, well, yeah, but America did it to the Indians. That means you don't have an argument. You're just reverting to something to cover up. You're, you're, you're trying to make a dichotomy there that the person talking already justified America doing it when maybe that wasn't their point at all. That was what Putin did. Putin was not proving his innocence on this Malaysia flight. And I came out at him with teeth barred. I don't like the man. I think he's a neo-communist. However, in this instance, when he did release the material and why he waited so long, I'll never know, it does look like Vladimir Putin, Russia, did not down that airliner. So I stayed away from this Ferguson thing because I was greatly concerned that this wasn't what it seemed. This looked like race baiting to me. Well, as I was on my trip, I'm sitting in my room, and what do I see? Images of Brown stealing cigars and cigarettes, and God only knows what else he was reaching for and didn't get. On camera with his friend that looks like he lied for him. Then I hear about the cop with the fractured eye sockets. Regular listeners, do I like cops usually? No. However, in this instance, I'm going to have to say I think the cop was right. I think. I'm not going to do a Vladimir Putin again and have to retract something. I don't retract things. I retracted uh, one article when the show first started about there being radiation machines in Canton in the airport, and they ended up being... Uh, uh, metal detectors. It was reported to me badly. And I retracted Putin about a week ago. So I'm not committing myself. But I'm 90% sure that Brown had it coming. You don't steal cigarettes by brute force out of a convenience store and then attack a cop and not get shot. Now, could the cop have maced him? In the Brown incident, I'm not sure. In the incident, I'm going to get to in a minute, I will. But I'm sorry, it looks like, unfortunately, and I'm not happy when someone dies, it looks like this guy had it coming. Okay, I'm sorry, that is just the way it looks. Missouri State Highway Patrol Captain Ron Johnson used riot police to intimidate, assault, and arrest journalists early Wednesday morning after several thrown bottles ignited unrest in the streets of Ferguson, Missouri. Listen to this, friends. This is still extremely heavy-handed, and they are trying to acclimate all of us to accepting martial law and government control of the streets. Um, have any of you ever been to Nassau? The military looks like it is their police there. I don't know enough about how that works, but... They're trying to acclimate something like that in the U.S. And I don't care how other countries run their countries. Nassau's a great, uh, a great city and a great country. But we have something called uh, posse comitatus, which makes it illegal for this to be the case. So what they're doing is they're getting around posse comitatus by selling the military gear to the police stations. And then they're getting them used to it. Oh, look, Mommy, that's cool, a SWAT team going down the street. And they got the little SWAT toys to get kids to think that that's cool. There are ways to control riots that do not involve military gear from the police. I, I thought, no, Sam, I thought you said you were on the police's side. No, I am on one police officer's side, mostly. Okay, I don't, again, we're not doing a Vladimir, mostly. Um, I'm not in favor of what the rest of the police are doing here. Listen to this. Only moments before the situation deteriorated, InfoWars reporter Joe Biggs attempted to alert an officer to a stash of bottles hidden under a metal bin, seemingly in vain. So first of all, he sees bottles being flying, flying around, and the reporter, Joe Biggs, says to the officer, you're going to want to move those bottles. They have bottles hidden under the trash can. To which the brilliant officer did nothing. 
After bottles on the scene were thrown at police, officers began singling out journalists for arrest. While one cop with an M14 rifle threatened to cover your ears, I'm not censoring it, fucking kill others. I witnessed three journalists get down to the ground by police officers and were punched, grabbed, wrangled, hug tied up, and carried out of there, InfoWars reporter Joe Briggs explained. The police, it goes on, are against the media because they know the truth will get out and they do not want that to happen. This is becoming like a Tiananmen Square issue. Uh, is it that bad? No. Did Tiananmen Square get that bad overnight? No. Um, this is atrocious news because there are people like me that think that this officer was in the right that thinks that a whole lot more officers are in the wrong in the way that they're handling the shooting. Okay, why why aren't the police out there being calmer and saying, do you want thugs robbing your convenience store and getting away with it? Is that what you want? I don't care what color you are. We don't play the color game on the correct views. Mr. Blackman, do you want people like Brown breaking into stores, attacking police officers afterwards, dislocating their eye and getting away with it? Or do you think the officer should just lay there and die? Uh, Koreans, white people, Indians, any of you want that? Because I don't. Okay, I'm white and if a white guy did it, the white guy had it coming. If this appears to be what it looks like, InfoWars cameraman Marcos Morales spotted Captain Johnson surveying the scene and immediately began demanding to know why journalists were being targeted. Why do you think about why do you think about this, Captain? They're arresting journalists. Keep in mind journalists were allowed to be everywhere. But it was for their safety. BS! Uh, how do you think they filmed Pearl Harbor? Wait, you think God gave him the footage? They went to Pearl Harbor when the bombs were falling and filmed it as fire was all around there. You mean to tell me that's not more dangerous than riots in St. Scrus? B.S. Johnson responded to being exposed by attempting to sick several officers on Morales, repeatedly saying, you're next. And again, we, we were intimidated. We didn't have guns pointed at us, but there were guns brought out and rifles. Uh, you can watch us going through it at Bilderberg, Why It Mattered to Me. It's the movie I made. Alex Jones is in it. Mark Dice is in it. Go watch it. At the same moment, InfoWars journalist Kit Daniels was only feet away from c confronting an unknown provocateur caught throwing bricks at police. Peaceful protesters surrounded the man who promised he hadn't been hired by police and forced him out of the area as law enforcement ignored the incident. When's the last time you ever did anything illegal and then said, I swear I wasn't hired by the police? It looks like certain factions of the police or authority figures are potentially paying people to make the riot worse which would bring in more of the martial law, which is what they want. Why do they want martial law in this little town, Sam? Why wouldn't they do it in St. Louis? They wasn't in this town because I don't think they knew that this mess was going to happen. Uh, to quote Rahm Emanuel, I think it was, who said, never let a good disaster go uh, without, you know, how do you word that? Paraphrased, never let a good disaster go to waste. If they can get martial law into this city, then they think about all the marijuana busts they can make, all the crack busts they can make, all the people that they can lock into prison and make money off of from the private prison industry. That, my friends, is a correct view. Think, people, think. This isn't about one thug robbing a store. And again, I was against the thugs and the hoodlums that burnt the store down. But at this, at this, at this junction here, it's not most of the people protesting that are causing the problem. Unfortunately, the people protesting are on the wrong side of this. I understand that the hood is upset. I was born and raised in the hood, and I live about a block away from it now. Having said that, 
I think it can't be underscored enough that there's a, a seething anger in the hood about the injustices. Unfortunately, this is, doesn't seem to be an injustice, so it's making the people protesting now look very foolish. Riot police on scene have only continued to escalate the situation by arresting journalists and peaceful protesters while a small group of prof provocateurs were ignored. Uh, while, while we were on our little, while we were at the airport, I saw on CNN that they were harassing CNN journalists for standing where they were told to stand. In just the last week, more than a dozen journalists have been arrested while attempting to capture police abuses on the ground. There's going to be a lot of uh, police having to pay for that, too, because that's illegal. You are allowed, in fact, to film police, according to the Supreme Court of the U.S. We also got this. Um, Paul Joseph Watson, again, Ferguson cop points at journalists, says, I'm going to fucking kill you. Shocking footage out of Ferguson, Missouri, shows an officer pointing his gun directly at protesters at the press while remarking uh, what I just said. I'm not going to swear just for the hell of it. <laughs> the scene was witnessed by InfoWars reporter Joe Biggs, who was also filming the incident. The clip shows a Ferguson officer with his gun raised pointed it directly at a citizen journalist who was streaming at the time. Oh my God, gun raised, gun raised, states the journalist before Biggs remarks, gun pointed. And there's pictures on the site, so go look if you think I'm lying. My hands are up, bro, my hands are up, states the journalist before the cop responds, I'm going to effing kill you, get back, get back. You're going to kill him, asked another individual before the journalist asked, did he just threaten to kill me? When the cop is asked for his name, he responds, go F yourself. Yes, I censored one. Everyone's going to freak out and log off. Another clip shows the officer pointing his gun at protesters, demand he's lower his weapon. A second cop, good cop, bad cop, intervenes to make the officer lower his weapon as more irate demonstrators demand to know the officer's name. The officer's response to people asking for his name immediately prompted the launch of the Twitter hashtag, um, <laughs> well, I'm going to have to swear again. The hashtag is uh, Officer Go Fuck Yourself. That's what they're calling him. And you can go find news on it there. And that brings us to the last part of the reporting that I'm going to do on this Ferguson mess. Um, hopefully no cops will cause me to swear in order to quote them. You'd think I was quoting Tupac or something. Uh, economic collapse, Michael Snyder. Uh-oh, police shoot and kill another young black male in the St. Louis area. At least he's calling him a young black male and not a teen. He was 18 years old and he was robbing a convenience store. He's a teen the same way uh, that the 19-year-old on the porn site is with four guys. Yeah, she's an innocent little teen. On Tuesday, police in, and this is August 20th, on Tuesday, police in North St. Scurus shot and killed a 23-year-old African-American male that was suspected of robbing a convenience store, which is exactly what Brown did. It is being reported that he was brandishing a knife and kept coming toward the police officer even after they ordered him to stop and drop the knife multiple times. So it sounds like the police may have justified in shooting the suspect, but is it really going to matter, it says. Within moments of the shooting, there were reports that crowds were already gathering at the scene. Needless to say, they could inflame the riots that have been going on for more than a week in nearby Ferguson. The protesters over in Ferguson aren't going to care if the police followed proper protocol or not. All that they are going to care about is the fact that the police shot and killed another young black male. The reason I don't know I don't even have an opinion on which side of this I'm on. Is It seems like Brown was shot after he was already attacking and dislocating the eye of the police officer. For stealing black and mild, by the way. Now, if he'd been walking down the street and the cop wanted to frisk him and he got in the fight, I'd be on Brown's side. But you just robbed a convenience store. There's a difference. I don't know why in this case the police didn't tase the man before he got close to them. They didn't necessarily have to shoot this individual, I don't think. But we don't know the facts yet, and we don't want to do a Vladimir now, do we? This shooting happened just a few miles from where Michael Brown was shot and killed. 
The following is how CNN described the latest shooting. The suspect, who right now is described as a 23-year-old African-American, was, was acting erratically, walking back and forth up and down the street, St. Louis Police Chief Sam Dotson told reporters. As officers arrived, the suspect turned towards the officers and started to walk towards them, clutching his waistband. He then pulled out a knife and told the officers, shoot me now, kill me now, the chief said. And of course, they didn't taser him. <laughs> Responding officers told the man repeatedly to stop and drop his knife, Dotson said, again, not tasering him. They only taser 90-year-old people, 103-year-old people. Some of them die. I didn't just say it. Look it up. Those both happened. He continued to approach, and we didn't tase him. Coming to within about four feet of one of the officers, that didn't tase him, Dotson said, adding that other officers then fired their weapons instead of tasing him, striking the suspect. According to St. Louis Police Chief, the suspect was involved in an incident earlier in the day at a convenience store where he is accused of walking out with two energy drinks and a package of pastries without paying. If I was a police officer, it says, and someone continued to advance towards me with a knife, after multiple warnings to stop, I would have done something to protect myself. Yeah, possibly taser him. But at this point, no amount of logic or reason is going to matter to the protesters in Ferguson. In fact, a crowd of about 150 rapidly gathered to the scene of this shooting. And it talks about that. I'm not going to... They were chanting, hands up, don't shoot, which is supposedly what uh, Brown said. It does not seem to be the case. It looks like he was uh, lied, uh, lied for. Of course, the big fear is that the incident is going to add fuel to the fire to the protesters over in Ferguson. If you want to get an idea how bad it can be, and there's a video for it on the page. As I pointed out the other day, he writes, all of this anger and frustration did not suddenly come out of a vacuum. The truth is that anger, frustration, and desperation have been steadily building in improvised communities all over the nation for years. And this is true. This is very much true. This is what happens when you send all the good jobs out of the country. Many regular listeners know, I've already told you in the past, I drove cab and to eat, I had to take people to prostitutes and crack houses and all kinds of things. And yeah, there's anger in the, in the hood and it's deserved anger. It says in the end, it isn't going to matter to the protest in Ferguson whether today's shooting was justified or not. It isn't even going to really matter whether the shooting of Michael Brown was justified or not. The events of the past 10 days have unleashed a volcano of rage that is not going to be easily extinguished. So we can probably expect to see even more violence, more rioting, and more looting in Ferguson. On some nights, the police in Ferguson have not even tried to stop the looting. It would be very interesting to find out precisely who gave them those instructions. Indeed, it would. Um, again, look up Tattoo Shop Guns of Ferguson Riot, and you'll find that the only people that didn't get robbed were people that were armed. Am I saying that you should get armed in case this violence spreads to your city like the Rodney King shootings? Yes, that's what I'm or beating. Yes, that's what I'm saying. As the eyes of the nation and the entire world are glued on the unrest in Ferguson, there is a significant amount of danger that these riots could start spreading to other cities. That's why I told you to arm yourself. If that happens, it will only be a matter of time before the federal government cracks down hard, and that is what they're trying to do. It says if the feds get involved, it'll be really, really bad. That is really, really true. A U.S. Army document that was released just a few months ago outlines how the Army would respond to full-scale riots inside the United States. Paul Joseph Watson, PJ Dub, has detailed, and it includes potentially lethal, lethal force against unarmed civilians. So we're not talking about violent people here. We're talking about people that are standing up for the right to free speech. A document released by the U.S. Army details preparation for full-scale riots, la 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 la. Um, it makes it clear that the techniques detailed therein are to be applied both outside and inside the continental U.S. in the event of an unruly and violent crowd. To restore public order. Yeah, you restore public order by shooting uh, um, peaceful protesters. It also says the most shocking... Oh, let me scroll down too fast. 
The most shocking aspect of the document is the fact that it describes the deployment of a lethal response against unarmed civilians, including sniper response. Under the heading sniper response, the document states, quote, ensure that target leaders or troublemakers are targeted. Oh, so if you lead the march for your First Amendment, which you're allowed to do, you should be targeted. Exploit the psychological effect of an attack. Yeah, do everything you can to put fear in people for standing up for their rights. Friends, that's that's your Ferguson update. That's where it stands right now. It's not good. It isn't good. Well, what do I think you should do? I think you should be armed. I really think you should be armed because this could spread to other cities and you could be in trouble for absolutely nothing. You could own a store. You could be robbed. You Somebody could think that you're the wrong color. You could be shot, robbed. Guard your house. Get armed. Get smart. And... Um, Hope it doesn't come to your city because they're trying to create a racial divide where there isn't one. I've said it a hundred times. Most people don't really, they hate certain cultures. They don't hate races. This is not 50 years ago. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Uh, go to the mediaspeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. Also, Amazon.com, Kindle House. Asleep Unknowing. Risen, which is a persuasive essay on the historicity of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and a short story called Ace, um, The Lucky Leprechaun, is for sale, written by me. And uh, some good fiction, other than The Risen, that one is historical fact. And before I get into my last three stories, I want to ask you to check out the Seacrest Motel. You'll find it in Sandusky. You like haunted houses? Great. I love haunted houses. Roller coasters? Check. All of it, check. It's going to be starting in a couple weeks, and uh, some of the rooms at the Breakers can go for upwards to $600. I don't think you can even sniff at a room for under $125. Go to the Seacrest Motel. She'll get you a room for somewhere around half that. Let her know. And say, hey, Vicky. That's who's probably going to be checking in. Hey, Vicky, I heard about you from TCV, The Correct Views. You're going to get a really good deal when you tell her that, and you're going to have a blast at the point. Uh, independent.co.uk, a little bit of science news here before we get into the dum dee dum dee dum dee of the day. Neanderthals lived alongside humans for centuries, latest study shows. I've been following this for a while, and all of you already know that we lived alongside dinosaurs. Yep, just like the Bible said with Leviathan. Did you ever notice that it wasn't written with a great level of, um, oh my God, he was eaten by a whale, a big fish. It's not written with that kind of uniqueness in its penmanship, which meant it happened from time to time. It wasn't that unusual then. Man walked with dinosaurs. We have covered that extensively on here with tons of science to back it up. Well, it looks like the Neanderthals were also here with us as well. And this does not surprise me a bit because carbon dating has been fluctuating for a number of times on this. There's, they, they've been simply getting rid of the data that proves that Neanderthals were still here with us and showing you the data that proves that they were here before us, which we already knew. Belgium holds the secret to producing some of the finest chocolate, waffles, and beer in the world. And might I add, they spawned Front 242. If you don't know who they are, look them up, you'll be in heaven. But it turns out the country may also have the answer to where the Neanderthals died out. Listening to Top 40 Radio, I'm not sure that the Neanderthals did die out, but we'll go with it. The latest and most precise date for when Neanderthals finally disappeared shows that the last time they walked the Earth was 40,000 years ago, except for maybe Lady Gaga, and they probably went extinct in Western Europe, other than Lady Gaga. This means that they would have lived alongside anatomically modern humans, homo sapiens, that would be you and I, not Lady Gaga, for as long as 20,000 years, giving ample time for the exchange of culture and genes, scientists said. However, and when the Neanderthals, close cousins of homo sapiens, died out, have been two of the great mysteries of evolution. Well, I can answer that for you. There is no evolution. Things, uh, microevolution happens. Uh, the peppered moth used to be white. But when the, uh, when the trees started to pick up uh, levels of carbon and uh, mild pollution from plants, 
or like um, oil plants. I don't mean plants that grow from uh, economic plants. How's that? The Industrial Revolution boom. They became peppered. They adapted within their species. They didn't change species. It is still a moth. A fish does not become a man. We did not come from fish. There is nothing, nothing on the uh, historical table to prove that any of this happened. It's all theory. That's why, that's no great mystery there. But it also says it set a new set of radiocarbon dates of Neanderthal bones and artifacts have finally solved the latter. Well, I solved the first. Welcome to the correct views. Scientists have analyzed... Oh, this computer scrolls fast. Scientists have analyzed 196 samples of bone, charcoal, and shell from 40 key Neanderthal sites from Spain to Arusha and concluded that this species of thick-set humans were who adapted to cold climates disappeared throughout this entire region before 39,000 years ago. This means that the overlap in Europe with the newly arrived Homo sapiens with their more gracial autonomy and more complex stone and bone tools must have lasted at least 4,000 years. Therefore, when historical records make reference to people being a slave class, I'm not saying it's right, but in many instances, this is likely who they were talking about. <laughs> it says it could have been as long as 20,000 years in Asia, which anatomically modern humans had considered long-reaching Europe. And the article goes on, and there's tons of proof for those of you that would like to think I'm lying and I'm not. It is exactly what I told you.